Hello everyone, welcome to the Geoecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on geography and environment. So in today's session in climatology, we are going to discuss about the second set of winds from the last session we are going to carry forward. So in last session, we discussed about the primary winds. So if you have not watched the video on primary winds, do go to the playlist of climatology and watch that. And in today's session, we are going to discuss about the secondary winds. That is the second set of winds at a lower scale. And that is important in terms of its variation. So it is also called variable winds. So let's understand what are the variable winds, its characteristics and examples. But before we go ahead, Please like and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to share the videos with others as well. So now after we have learnt about the primary winds, that is the major chunk of the winds on the planet, now it's time to learn about the secondary winds which are also called variable winds. Remember planetary winds were called invariable. Now this is a variable winds because they vary. They are of periodic nature, so seasonal nature. That is why they are also called periodic winds. Now remember when we are talking about these secondary winds, two things matter. First is their variation. So that is one factor that they are variation bearing winds. That is they have nature which is inherent that they vary from one place to the other. The second important factor is their scale. Right. So remember in the first lecture in climatology, we talked that climatology is also about scale. So then this is not at that large scale that is planetary scale. That is at the second layer scale. So at a synoptic scale or a regional scale. So that is important to understand that these secondary winds are not of a planetary scale. So that is important. They are variable in nature. So they are different from the invariable winds and they are also periodic. Basically means they are fixed to a certain period, a certain time. That is why they have seasonality in character. So that is important to remember about the basics of these secondary winds that we call as the periodic winds as well. So now let's understand that what is their characteristic and what are their types. So these winds change in what? Their direction with change in season. Now here is the catch. The word here is change. That's why they are also called variable winds or periodic winds as there is a shift in their direction as well. Remember in the primary winds there was almost fairly fixed direction of the trade winds or of the westerlies or of the easterlies. But here what you see there is a variation. There is a change in direction itself and also with the seasonal change. That is why they are called periodic as we understand. Right. So for example the best one is our monsoons that we see in India or South Asia for that matter, right? So monsoons are what? It's what the basic definition of monsoon says that it is a reversal of wind system, remember? So it is reversal basically means of what? Reverse in the direction and also has a periodic or seasonal nature. So monsoons are fixed to a particular season of the year, right? So that is important. So that's why monsoons are the best example of these large scale modification of planetary wind system. So when this planetary wind system at a certain scale in a certain season, when they are modified, that is what they form. That is the periodic winds or we say that is the secondary winds. Now also remember primary is the basic, secondary is the derivative. So secondary winds are derived from these primary sources. So primary is the larger chunk of wind out of which in a particular season when this particular air mass is now changing its nature that is where it we say that it is a secondary wind. So other examples of these periodic winds or secondary winds are like land and sea breeze on a regional scale that is mountain and valley breeze also are important. So one is near coastal areas, one in this now mountain and valley region. Then what we have is anabatic and catabatic wind. We are going to discuss this that what is this anabatic and catabatic winds. Then what we have is the cyclones and anti-cyclones. So one where we have this centripetal action that is winds moving towards the center and one where the wind is away from the center. So that is important. And then what we have is the air mass that is localized air of particular locations where they have regional characteristics. That is what we say is air mass. So we are going to discuss these all these important things in terms of the periodic winds. They are not of an entire planetary character. They are of a variable nature. They have dynamic nature that is important to understand. That is why what we say is these are the periodic winds or seasonal winds or variable winds. So let's start with the monsoons itself. So when we say these monsoons, remember this is what we know is the 
north east direction and from here the fair direction is towards southwest this is the direction of what you have trade winds right but what happens in a season there is a reversal or change of this the wind start blowing like this and what is this this is just the reversal of the entire wind system so southwest to northeast so what we say in india what kind of monsoon do we have it is called southwest monsoon so that is important here you have a change of direction change of characteristic of the wind so monsoons are traditionally explained as land and sea breezes on large scale so remember this is a land area and this is a sea area so remember the traditional concept in details we are going to do this monsoon lecture separately as well but for now just remember the traditional concept is this differential heating of land and water so sea breeze and land breeze are important so what happens when sun moves towards the land that is toward the tropics what happens the insulation is maximum here and these winds blow from these high pressure to the low pressure because low pressure is here right now on the land so that is one way to understand it so they give rise to this convectional circulation in a particular season that is when the sun is overhead on tropics and that is where it is important that this particular land mass is warming and that is where these winds are attracted so these monsoons are characterized by seasonal reversal of the wind direction that we know so in summer this kind of wind is there remember and what happens in the winter these winds return back to this particular direction because now when we have northern hemisphere winters it means now sun is moving southwards and energy belts are shifting towards the equator so again there is a reversal in the system so it means one summer monsoon goes like this and winter monsoon comes like this so there is a reversal there is a periodic change right from the summer to the winter so during summer what happens you see the trade winds of southern hemisphere are pulled towards northern by an apparent northward movement of the sun so even these trade winds remember they are pulled like this and they move in the particular direction from southwest to northeast why they are pulled remember the insulation factor the temperature and pressure belt relationship that is what is important here so while crossing the equator these winds get deflected to their right remember they should have gone straight but now what you see is they are reflected here and what is the reason the coriolis force factor so that is important again so this is what we say is the summer monsoon reversal of wind system in details of the mechanism and the theories of these monsoons we are going to make a separate lecture but for now we are discussing it under periodic wind system that is important here so when we say then there is a winter situation see the reversal again there is a change what is there these trade winds now are pulled in this direction across this equator what you see because now sun movement is towards south so what is happening the conditions are reversed of the summer so divergent winds are produced by anti cyclonic movement now remember cyclonic and anti cyclonic movement we have understood so now this is what is going away and that is where we say anti cyclonic movement so this is a cold wind which is now going here away from the center so this movement is enhanced by apparent southward movement of the sun so remember everything triggered by the sun movement and sun movement basically means what movement of insulation so that is important here so these monsoon winds flow over india pakistan bangladesh myanmar sri lanka arabian sea bay of bengal so it has fairly two branches what we see is one is the arabian sea branch one is the bay of bengal branch and that is what we see the concept of this summer and winter monsoon so that is important in terms of the seasonal character or seasonality or periodicity that we define here in terms of the summer and winter monsoon season right so that's important now let's go to the second one that we discussed what is this land breeze and sea breeze now this is also important in a general larger region what happens these cool winds blow towards land during the day time because land is heated fast so this warm air rises up and this is vacuum is created here so this cool air blows here and then there is this convection cycle going on and that is what we understand as land breeze and sea breeze so what happens during the day time what you see the land heats up faster and becomes warmer than sea and over the land there is a circulation from sea so that is important here now what you see is just opposite that is reversal happening so whenever we see this word reversal or change what you observe in every situation that we discuss right in monsoon also separately in land breeze and sea breeze also this change is quite evident and when there is this change or for that matter when we say fluctuation right or what we say is variation so these are the words that we use when we write answers related to these periodic winds or the secondary winds that is important here so land breeze and sea breeze is yet another example then what we have is the valley breeze and mountain breeze so what we observe here is that 
valley and mountain again are warmed separately so what happens again during the daytime remember what happens this is being warmed as sunshine falls here especially in northern hemisphere the south facing slopes are warmed faster as we know that is called aspect so slope and aspect also matter that is what we have discussed already in the factors related to this air circulation and temperature and pressure wells so what you see in mountain areas there is a warming and warm air moves up during the daytime so when these warm winds move up what happens going to a particular height remember what happens there is a lack of pressure there is also lapse rate that functions so what happens it starts to cool and when wind cools there is a density increase remember the gas loss factor and then these dense wind starts to descend into the valley so during night what happens the winds that were blowing in the upper air now they have cooled and now they are going entirely into the valley like a stream flows from the top of the mountains and that is what we say is this drainage system so this is like a air drainage that happens right so this is what is important to understand that this is the mountain breeze and this is the valley breeze and that is what we understand here that there is a change there is a fluctuation so especially in mountainous regions this happen so this is a phenomena very much important known as a valley breeze and a mountain breeze so mountain breeze are what they are coming from the mountains to the valleys so they are mountain winds and when from valley during the daytime they are going up to the mountains that is from the low to the high they are called the valley breeze so that is important to understand here the next set of winds that we discussed was the anabatic winds and the catabatic winds so what are these now let's understand these anabatic and catabatic winds so these are another type of winds remember up slope and down slope is the term up slope basically means what they are going up the slope and when they are coming down the slope so when they are going up the slope what is the name anabatic anabatic is basically warm surface that is warm in character so that is important here and catabatic is basically cool winds right so now let's understand what is this change so what happens this is where the moisture in the winds is different in different particular slope so what happens you see this particular sunshine here on this slope so what will happen automatically the air in contact with this land surface will go up it will form cloud it will rain and then the dry winds will go this side on again it will descend down so this hot air rises up concept is still here as well now so what happens anabatic winds bring a rainfall they form cumulus clouds right they lead to this precipitation so that is important here but when they descend down the leeward side now remember cloud formation and rainfall has happened now this dry wind is now going this side here right and what happens because of this adiabatic process what is released here latent heat of condensation is released so the temperature of this wind becomes higher and it goes up and gradually wind starts cooling going to the other side it is very dry in character because it doesn't have any moisture left so this is the reason why the leeward side does not have any moisture so that wind is called catabatic or dry wind so that is important to understand so what you see this side of the mountain which has ample of sunshine and also it has ample of rainfall or precipitation but other side is completely dry so that is important to understand here now this dry air also melts the snow in a shorter time period so remember this dry air which has higher energy many times also leads to this melting of snow in a very short period of time that also is important in terms of this climatic process at a secondary scale that is where we say anabatic winds and catabatic winds also leads to this particular variations across the mountains and valleys that you see or across the slope areas that is up slope or down slope even in some higher belts or highlands that you may say or plateau region also because they are also part of the highlands so not necessarily that it has to be a great huge mountain only but some kind of higher slope and lower slope is where these winds are being traced so that is important here and the last examples are the cyclones and anti cyclones and air masses so in details when we discuss cyclones separately anti cyclones separately and air masses separately in the lectures to come there we can discuss here we have to remember that these are also of a seasonal or variable characteristic remember cyclones are when the wind is blowing in towards a center from all the directions so this is simply what you see is this kind of 
cyclone that wind is actually going centripetal towards the center but when what happens the wind starts going away from the center that is just opposite it is called anti cyclone so generally this kind of circulation we have already seen in the pressure belts differently what you see what is the low pressure area where all the winds rush towards that from the high pressure area so center of the cyclone is actually low pressure and the surrounding is high pressure so winds move from high to low just opposite what happens when the cool winds subside then it pushes the air and further it goes away and that is what we say is the subsidence part right subsiding air so that is also important that is like anti cyclonic circulation and then what we have is the air masses which are part of those masses of air or what we say is the regional parcels of air which have a given characteristic of the source regions so basically they are like if there is a particular land mass where this their air mass is there it will have a unique characteristic that will be related to this land mass so this land mass will have a unique characteristic and that is where this land mass will also impact the air in contact to it and that is called air mass so it is a unique regional parcel of air that we define as air mass in terms of source regions so in details we are going to talk about these anti cyclones and cyclones and air masses in separate lectures but for now what we have discussed is these examples in terms of the secondary winds or the variable winds that we need to remember so now when we have discussed about the various characteristics the nature the examples of these secondary winds or what we say is the variable winds in the last session on winds that we are going to do is on the local winds so the local winds are very much important in terms of examination perspective their names their locations that is important so that is what we are coming up with in the next session so stay tuned stay safe keep watching